Good evening, good evening. Today is March the 19th, 2021, and I am your host, Deontay Carroll, and welcome to yet another edition of Turn Up the Volume. This is my podcast. I say this every week. I haven't forgot what episode this is. I'm just having the time of my life, and I am excited, extremely excited, and I'm going to tell y'all why real quick. So, I'm excited because, so, okay, so here's the thing. I believe in paying it back, paying it forward. And when you go along, when God blesses you and to do different things, you don't forget the people that uh, helped you out and put you on when you didn't even have a platform. And so I'm excited because there's a woman of God with a G O D T. All right, a woman of God who a couple of years ago, back in like 2017, uh, she had a radio show, podcast, and everything. I don't even know how many times I've been on the radio because of her. And uh, even, you know, with me and my wife, we were engaged. She brought me and my wife on at the time we were engaged and because we had a whole channel and everything. And she is just a trailblazer. She's the homie. As she would always say, she is my homie. Uh, we go way, way back from Howard School of Divinity. That's where we met. And uh, ever since then, we just been homies. I'm just going to give y'all a disclaimer that we may act like some plum fools on here because we don't really know how to act, even though we super saved. Uh, super save and all that other kind of wonderful stuff. Um, but nonetheless, y'all, I I'm, I have a wonderful woman of God here who's going to uh, chit-chat with me about a very, very important issue. Uh, and it's called the mistreatment of black women in America. And so uh, I have none other than the good reverend. <clears throat> Somebody cue up the Hammond B3 organ for me. She's going to finna preach a while. Uh, none other than Miss Yasmin Errington. How you doing, Yas? Hey, Deontay, what's good? It's, it's time to turn up the volume and act like some plum food. <laughs> turn up the volume, turn up the volume. Yeah, I love oh, your intro. That was, that was hot. That was nice. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, I told you I'm a little bougie a little bit. Black men can be bougie. Okay, black men can be bougie. They have it put together and have, it has something look like something positive. So, you know, um, but I'm excited to have you on. Thank you. I just want to tell you publicly. I know I've told you this several times. Thank you so, so much for, before I even had a platform, before I even had a podcast, you put me on several times. You connected me to other people that had different platforms and you're never ashamed to, to you know, reach out and say, hey, Deontay, there's an opportunity there. There's a person here. Can you come over here and do this? You know, and you always have me in mind and, and that is just such a blessing. And so, and I always say when I start my podcast, one of the one of the first things I'm gonna do is put you on here. I just need to have the right topic that we could chop it up with. And sure enough, I got you here. And so I'm just grateful for all that you've done, being a great friend and, and a great person to uh, to be a colleague in ministry and all that. It's just wonderful. I'm just glad to to be able to say I got a platform to put you on now. <laughs> hey, listen, Deontay, yeah. I, I so appreciate you. Look, that that thank you was unnecessary. But I, but I, I'm grateful, and um, you know we go way back like a Cadillac, and uh, you had you're being humble because you did have a platform. You know you you had a, your your book um, is extremely powerful, and I always admired you know from the moment that I learned that you had the gumption and the audacity, and I mean that in the most positive way um, to share one of your personal uh, struggles um, and and to 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 be able to share that testimony and to be authentic and transparent about it everybody can't do that um, a lot of people can't or won't do that um, and so I've I've always been inspired by you and um, you and your wife, shout out to Lamika. Uh, yeah, she, look, she, she in the chat box too, giving you shout outs too. So. <laughs> such a beautiful soul. And you two give me hope. You two give me hope um, because, you know, one day I want to have a family and to be married to that tall, dark and handsome man of God, uh, you know, who's just going to shower me with love. And I want to have a whole bunch of babies like you. Maybe not, you know, maybe two or three, but hey, it's, it's all <laughs> good. So, look, I'm excited. Let's Let's dive right in because this is a major this is a major topic and you and I can yeah, talk yeah. days and days until we're black and blue in the face about the mistreatment of black women in America. Yeah. 
Yeah, so so you said you had some stuff on your mind. Um, cause I know I had like a little agenda, you know, try to put a little agenda together, but you, but you had some stuff on your mind that you want to talk about. So hit, so, so, oh, so, yeah. so what's on oh, your mind? Yeah. What's on your mind? See, see, when you, when you call me, you know, I'm going to be prepared. <laughs> yeah. You the pro, you the pro, no doubt. You the pro. Grandma taught, me, grandma taught me to be prepared. You know, that's the blessing of growing up in, in church and, and being an announcement clerk. Amen. The Amen. Church announcements for today is Lord but, but first, um, in all in all seriousness, um, I, I, I have to say this and I want to say this from the bottom of my heart uh, for all of my Asian, Asiatic, uh, Asian American, Pacific Islander brothers and sisters. I support you. I stand with you. I love you. Uh, I am totally and completely disgusted by the hate crimes that have been conducted by white ter- white domestic terrorists Come on now. in the United States of America. It's not acceptable. We will not stand for it. It is a downright a shame how so many groups, uh, people of color have been uh, demonized. Uh, we've been ostracized. We've been pushed down. We've been beaten. We've been bruised, but we will not give up We will not fail and we will stand together collectively. Put let's put a stop to this. Let's put a stop to this. I and Deontay, I had a uh I was on a podcast called Curious Christian not too long ago. And the topic was talking about race to your friends and family. Mm. Um and and really quickly I want to share this. Uh Pastor uh Howard John Wesley did a powerful, powerful sermon Mm. dispelling the myth of the curse of Ham. And and this wasn't too long ago. You can go to Alfred Street Baptist Church. You can go to their Facebook page Mm -hmm. and you can look up the sermon. Um, And he, in it, he was like, it was a series where he was talking about the Huxtables. Um, There are no Huxtables, right? There, There is no perfect family. And in that he dispelled the myth of the curse of Ham and he shared how during slavery times in the United States, how um, uh, uh, white um, uh, uh, slave owners would, in order to keep order and to justify uh, why black people should be their slaves and be obedient to their slave masters mm-hmm. they would ref- they they sacralized um the scripture in genesis the scripture that talks about the curse of ham but ultimately it's not the curse of ham um canaan his son was the one that was cursed so you all take a look every black everybody everybody i don't care where you're from your your background, your ethnicity, your even if you are not if you even if you don't identify as religious, everybody ought to watch that sermon. And um, really quickly, Deontay, there, there's so many topics that we can talk about under the umbrella of mistreatment of Black women in America. And so I have I'm just gonna read through my list because we're not gonna get through it all. Look, Slavery. You know we, we, you know we theologians, we could talk for days for real. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, Slavery. Uh, Henrietta Lacks, okay. Rosa Parks, Ruby Bridges, mm. Sarah Bartman, Tulsa Race Massacre, Women in the Black Church, uh-huh. Women in Media, uh, Black Women Who Have Won Oscars, or lack thereof, um, Women and Girls Who Are Sex Trafficked. Uh, uh, that is one of the largest industries in the United States of America. Um, the Mistreatment of Black Trans Women. Uh, women in prison and detention centers and returning citizens, uh, girlfriends serving time for boyfriends or husbands, uh, crimes, uh, domestic violence, uh, First Lady Michelle Obama and some of the uh, terrible, um, terrible names that she was called um, and uh, VP, Kam- Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, Talk about it. Uh, we can we can come back to that. There was um, a man the other day that was pulled that was pulled over by the Secret Service um, because he he was found with a rifle and ammunition in his mm. car, ready to shoot up 
the residence at which president at the was at which our vice president, the second in charge of the United States, um, her residence. But fortunately, uh, she she was not she had not moved in yet. And then yeah, I have okay. earning earning salary gap or the wage gap between men and women. Mm-hmm. Um, women can do the exact same job and be paid less. So that now that's that's not let me disclaimer for all of my folks out there. This is not an all inclusive list. And I know there are a lot of other topics, um, but I just yeah. wanted to share some that were at the top of my mind and on my heart. Yeah. So let's. So before we get started, everybody do me a favor. All right. I need about five people to, sh- to share this content, share this. Go. It's on Facebook Live right now. So go and share this. Tag somebody's name in here because we're going to we finna talk about some serious stuff, okay? So hit share, share the button, and tag at least five people's names in this live feed right now. All right? So, uh, Elder, Yasmin, as I want to call you, because I feel like calling you that right now because it's my show. I can do what I want to do. Uh, so, where you want to start? Look, speaking into existence. I'm sorry. <laughs> <excuse> me. <laughs> I'm with family, so I, you know, can't yeah, handle look, it. I told you this is this is a good hood show. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so where, where you want to start? Cause you cause you mentioned a lot. Okay, so so where you matter of fact, ladies first. I'm gonna let you t- tell us where you want to start first. Don't do that to me. I don't. Mm-hmm. There's so many. I mean, the thing is, I don't want to sound like a broken record because I mm-hmm. feel like a lot of times when we talk about these things, we're preaching to the choir. Uh huh. Um. But what I can just, I guess, off the bat, black women in the United States, beyond the shadow of a doubt, have been truly, truly mistreated um, in so many forms and in so many industries, um, sometimes at home, uh, in our in our uh, religious sectors and spaces, uh, on the job, in the media. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm tired of seeing uh, these these uh, reali- reality TV shows yeah. um, that, I mean, it's sickening. It's sickening. It's not, I mean, for, for some of us, Yes, he he ha ha can be entertaining, but what we I think some of us fail to realize and see the bigger picture is not always about the dollar sign. It's not always about the fame and the fortune and how much money I can make because everybody in the world, even if they don't watch those shows religiously, when they're flipping through the channels, that is sometimes the only thing that they see. And 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 as a result, the stereotypes of black people that we're lazy, that we're ignorant, that we whatever, you know, the, the plethora of stereotypes out there continue to be perpetuated through these kinds of shows. I want to see let's bring back, you know, a Cosby show. Let's let's bring back, you know, to a certain extent, some of those those good, wholesome, funny shows, you know, Stanford and Son. Uh, Sanford and Son, uh, Good Times. We, I just, I don't, the way, you know, I we think in a lot of ways, I think some of us are under this illusion that we have progressed. And, and while we have, while we have, it has not come without a fight. And there are still many of us who are suffering, who are silenced, who are exploited in various ways and and of course i'm putting it very nicely mm-hmm. i'm putting this very very nicely but yeah i don't i mean where do i begin where where do i begin i mean it, it start it starts from the moment that we hit these shores yeah it starts from that very moment but i wanna i wanna i don't want to take up you know i, no. I want so you had you mentioned something just now you, you you mentioned that you were tired of the reality tv shows and i am too i stopped watching those things years ago um, but you talked about a couple of shows. You talked about the Cosby Show, even though Bill Cosby got his own stuff going on. But the messages 
that we saw in the Cosby show was very, very powerful. Even though he got his own stuff going on, you can't take away from the actual work that he did, right? Or the work that everybody put together on that show. And you mentioned some other sitcoms like Good Times. But it's very interesting. One of the sitcoms that I thought about, specifically as we talk about um, the mistreatment of African-American women, I thought about one of my favorite shows, Living Single. Oh, yeah. And and, and I'm going to tell you why I'm thinking about that show. I thought about that show because, and you see me, my wife will laugh, and she'll tell you, I love behind the scenes stuff and I love like real live stories about some of the stuff that we watch, that we listen to and all that kind of stuff. I'm the kind of person that'll have the DVD and go to the bloopers and go to the interviews and stuff because I want to hear what, how this stuff came together. And the reason why I mentioned Living Single is because um, Living Single was an awesome show. It Taking out, if we take out Kyle and Overton, right, just looking at the, what was it, uh, three or four women that were on the show. You had Sinclair, Maxine, uh, Queen Latifah, and, and Regine, those characters, right? Powerful black women who all had something going on. They were single. They were young, trying to find their way. You had one being a lawyer, powerful attorney, one owned a magazine company, right? And so here you have this show that is portraying women in a positive light that are about something that are doing something and they're giving the black audience saying hey here's some powerful women that are actually doing something they ain't shaking their high parts they're not you know out here doing nothing crazy but they're living but they're showing an example and it's amazing because those women outside of the show were mistreated uh because of the mere fact was that show came first right but down the hall or down the street on that same lot, you had them put on another show to imitate Living Single called Friends, right? An all white cast. I heard about right? that. that, that and, and I, I just heard that that was a, a spinoff from Living Single. It was Single. a spinoff, and they got it from Living Single. The, the concept of Friends came from Living Single. And so here you have an original TV show about a bunch of African Americans. Two African American males and like four African American women, right? That took off, and then here comes white supremacy trying to copy something that that that, that we didn't that we didn't put on the market that we didn't made look good. And the thing about it was well, that's those nothing four, new. That that's right, nothing right. new. And, and ask, those four, ask Rick James, ask uh, ask um, uh, I'm black and I'm proud. James Brown, yeah. James Brown, ask. Um, uh, why can't I think of all the names? The um, two of the fruity. Oh, oh, oh little Richard, Richard, little Richard, Richard Wayne yeah, Pennyman, no, Richard Wayne no, Pennyman no, out of uh, Macon, Georgia. Elvis. Oh yeah. yeah, all that shaking and gyrating, you know, yeah. that wasn't all, all his. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, and so 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 before I let you go on, so I thought about that because when Friends came along, right, they start they paid that cast way more than the cast of Living Single. And they treated them better than the cast of Living Single. And so here you have four African-American women who are yet again in the industry, in another industry, being taken advantage of, not being treated properly, not really being paid their worth and their value, right? And so that, and that I just wanted to point that out because we even see it in the industry that we love to give our money, our time, and attention to. Uh, but yeah, but go ahead. You, you had some other stuff. Go ahead, because I can I can go on for no, days about no, that because I was I upset when I going. found out. Keep going, but I I I absolutely love li- living single, and living single was on the air when I was a young girl. Man. Like I was, I'm younger, I'm old enough or young enough <laughs> to remember. We, we, we getting up there. We pushing thirty. <laughs> we pushing to remember living single, and if that was a, a, those were powerful images of of women, and especially, yeah. you know, Queen Latifah is one of, especially as a full figured woman. Yeah. All her life, you know, yeah. is someone that I truly admire. And, you know, like she was she was top dog. She was founder Facts. and CEO of this major cultural magazine. Um, I, and, and I remember speaking of uh, behind the scenes. I can't remember his name, but you probably will. Uh, the, the darker brother that played. Um, Kyle in, Baca. In cop, yes. Kyle yes. Baca. What's his he name? Recently, uh, TC Carson. That's his name. Yes. He recently did an interview not too long ago uh, about 
it, he, he kind of, you know how they have to do in the industry. You you don't say everything outright, uh -huh. but he was basically saying that um, that that he was pushed off of the show because that the producer, yeah, and that the yeah. producers wanted them to start doing things and saying things that or, or, or you know kind of like they wanted to curate these these store these these narratives that the characters weren't comfortable with mm -hmm. and they would come to him and he would be the spokesperson, the spokesperson. for the group and the white folks didn't like that and they let him go look the same thing See? well i'm gonna tell you before you go because i know before you go deontay um uh uh chadwick boseman yeah not just a few years before he passed lord rest his soul mm -hmm. he gave a very powerful uh um he gave a very powerful commencement speech at at, our, at the graduation i think wow. this, was, this was 2018 and he talked about how he was blacklisted and he was blackballed from the industry from hollywood mm -hmm. initially because he was marked as too difficult, you know, like a difficult Negro. And what happened was he he had the opportunity to be a character on a major show. And, and but the show was very, the, the, this, this black character was very stereotypical. There was no father, you know, the mother wasn't around. He was struggling with the drug addiction or all these kinds of things. And he went to the producers and he said, so what is my story? What is my character story? Where is my character's father? And, and so on and so forth. And they didn't like that. And they went ahead. He challenged them and he suggested he and he asked, he said, well, what is what is this young man's talent? What is this young man's skill? Give, give me something. Give me something of substance for this character. And they didn't like that. And next thing you know, he was blacklisted. And this has happened many. I could go on and on and on. Um, this has happened many, many of times to our black actors. Uh, actors and actresses, and I can't even imagine the kind of. And let's not even get into Me Too, yeah. Because I, I can't. I don't even want to imagine some of the things that our black actors and actresses and singers. Um, I still have to watch the Billie Holiday movie. Um, you know, it. to have had it. to go through. But yet, but yet, white culture. And I love no. Sh I love my my white brothers and sisters, but white culture, uh, the the su the supremacist you know, mine, mine purview is, well, we don't, you know, we're going to continue to oppress them, but we like their swag. We like their style. We like the way their bodies look. We like the way their hips look. Um, so we're going to, we like, we're going to steal all of that and make it mainstream for our culture and continue to oppress the, the originators you know, continue to oppress us. And so really what I see is that slavery continues to perpetuate itself every era in, in, in a different form. And the same thing, I'm going to talk about the SAT. Look, every institution, okay. if you think about it, every field and every institution, for the, for the most part, you have to take a what? A standardized test. Yeah. Who standardizes these tests? Why are they standardized? Who comes up with the questions? And I don't even have to tell you because you already know who sits uh, who sits at the heads of these tables and who yes. writes these tests. You know what I mean? To get into law school, you got to prepare the LSAT. Then after that, you know, you got to go through the program three years full time or, or more. Then you have to take a bar exam. You got to study for that. And everything has a strategy. And then what? You got to pay people like Kaplan and all these other institutions to teach you the strategy to pass the standardized test. Come on, somebody. Does somebody, anybody see what's wrong with this system? And, the, and, and they wonder why we go around talking about, you know, uh injustice and 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 all of these things and then we have to worry about being pulled over by the police we talk about sandra bland you know the 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 population uh the prison population uh is growing in numbers when it comes to women being incarcerated and you don't even want to know what they do to some of the women in the prison and the detention centers yes i said it we're going all the way in uh deontay how much time we got Cause I, I I've got time today. <laughs> right, I got time today too. We we only twenty seven minutes in to to, to talking, and, and part of that time was just opening up the show. 
So I mean, I mean, hey, hey, come on here. Anybody think about nothing? But come on, let's go there. Uh, so one of the things I thought about um, exploitation—that was the word that popped in my mind—was exploitation, right? And you talked about the, you know, something. I forgot what it was that you said recently because you had talked about it a lot. But one of the things that popped up was exploitation. And I thought about slavery. I thought about how, oh, you talked about how they loved our shape. They loved our women. They love how we look, what we do, and, and, and really exploit us and don't really care about us at all. And it made me think about slavery. It made me think of how mm -hmm. we were exploited then, how our women mm -hmm. were exploited then, right? We, we, we only good enough to be your slave at the same time. When sundown hits, you know, when the sun, when the sun sets, you're in the cabins raping our women, right? Impregnating them. And then mm -hmm. by daybreak, you're trying to beat them with a whip to their back. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, not only do you impregnate them, but then the offspring that you have with them, you don't claim them, you don't take care of them, you know, you separate the families. And so here we have it, like that same behavior is all, it, it, has, it has carried all the way up, to the, up until today. And I think about folk like Thomas Jefferson, you know, with Sally Hemmings, having all them kids with her and then leaving her in the cut somewhere. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just, it amazes me how the mindset and the behavior is still the same. Only difference is we are just living in a different time frame and it just looks a little different. It looks a little more polished. It looks mm -hmm. a little more, I guess, in some ways put together, but you can still see the, the sub subtleness of of the racism and, and, and of the and of the white supremacy and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, so it's, it, 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 it amazes me and it bothers me all at the same time. And the exploitation is still there and it just gets worse and worse. But yep. yet more craftier by the day. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, listen, the oppressor has to be creative, <laughs> <laughs> especially when the oppressed are smart. Mm -hmm. um, but but on that note, when you talked about because uh, I want to make sure we bring some history in here. Yeah. So when you talk about the exploitation of women, yes, it's but during slavery times, um, Sarah Bartman and I learned about her not too long ago, actually. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she this was she was best known of at least two South African. I, I'm going to. Please excuse me. I'm not going to say may not say this name correctly. Uh, Koi Koi women who due to the European objectifications of their buttockses were exhibited as freak show attractions in the 19th century Europe under the name Hottentot Venus. Mm. Hottentot was the name for the Koi people now considered an offensive term and Venus referred to the Roman goddess of love and fertility. So you can see even in the nickname that they gave Sarah Bartman, hot, hot and tot, hot and tot, uh -huh. the, uh, Venus, that it was both in the name itself was offensive, but also it, it, it tied to the goddess of fertility right so 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 black women have always been an object of desire mm -hmm. for, uh, for men of all let's not let's not i'm not gonna you know sugarcoat anything black women have been a subject of desire for men of every culture mm -hmm. and black and white men mm -hmm. but we have always been taboo and we've always been what they call exotic, right? And I know some women from other ethnicities can say the same thing, um, but the sad part about it is instead of uh, these men in particular celebrating us at, at for who we are and what we bring to America, and to, there would be mm. no white, generational wealth without the black woman mm. and it is true you know why Let's because we it. carried the babies for the, the the black slaves the african descendants the africans and african descendants and we carried the babies of the white slave owners yeah there would be no there would be no slavery there would be no generational wealth if if there was no black woman and and you know it's just really sad how 
how we continue to be put down and demonized. And even in the now, now I'll say this, we're in, I think what some of what is happening, um, and I know that you've seen this where uh, for a minute, the Black Lives Matter movement was seen as like, like a militant group or, or like, I think to some people, it was seen as an equivalent of the Black Panther movement, dare, dare I say. Uh -huh. uh, and we found very quickly, others have found very quickly that that's not the case, that um, we have been trying to say, hey, Black Lives Matter, that's not to negate that other lives matter, but until you can say Black Lives Matter and, and, and not feel any type of way about it, then we still have work to do. Um, but it goes beyond saying it. And so I think what's happening is, you know, the era of the of, of President Trump. Uh, oh, his, talk, talk his, his 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 openly racist rhetoric um, in the public square, in the public eye mm -hmm. uh, from the White House has given white nationalists and proud boys and, and all of that. Uh, all of those uh, uh, groups, the gumption and the, oh, you know, now everybody's coming out of the closet mm -hmm. and we're seeing a rise. And it's when he was referring to COVID-19 as the China virus, the China virus. And so people are, this, this, what, it's the truth. It's, the no, truth. it's, it's, just, it's, 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 it's just crazy because, so, here, so here's the thing, right? Donald Trump did something. In his in his presidency, and I talk about it from time to time when I have conversations with people, it's like he has brought out the realness in terms of what some people actually feel. Like some yeah. some folk that you would have never thought were racist, that you would have yeah. never thought. Like even some of our white counterparts. Okay, we even talked about Paula White. And so and here's another thing, right? And so how yeah. how long have we been engaging? Um, and and inviting women of the Caucasian descent or the Caucasian background to our churches, to our big name churches, giving them all kinds of money to preach to our people. When we got powerful powerhouses in the African American uh, community, women who who can who can preach Paul away under the pews, and now I feel like it bit us in the tail. Because now we didn't, if we really look at how many churches that we've invited her, we've invited people like her, we've invited folk that are not our, that are not our skin folk and giving them preferential treatment, all the honor that we can give them and all the respect. And now it's like, because how, how I honestly feel, it's like, dang, we didn't invite a Paula White and folk like her to our church. And I wonder while she was taking our money, was she really thinking some other racial stuff in, in, you know, in her head the whole time she preaching to us and preaching us happy and, and taking our money? She was happy to take our money, but yet that subtle racism was still there and it was still evident. And here we and here we slept on and, and mistreated African American women in ministry, right? Talked bad about them, told them they couldn't preach, told them they couldn't prophesy, gave them every scripture as to why they can't talk during service or why they can't preach. And then here we have like it, 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 it gets you know, you know, you struck a chord with me when you talk uh, about the black church and treatment of black women, look, especially black women preachers. You know, you struck a chord there. Look, we going all the way in, and so, and, but mm -hmm. see, that's how yeah. I feel. And so, and what I say to that is, like, my point, what, what I was saying is, we saw how a lot of people really felt in a Trump administration during the Trump administration, yeah. and I call those kind of white supremacists. I, I equate them to uh, the groundhog. And what I mean by that is once a year, they bring the groundhog out to, to show him up and, 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 and let him fake prophesy how much, how long of winter we're going to get or if we're going to get an early spring, right? And so for those quick little seconds, they show him up and, 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 and then they put him back and you don't see him no more till next year. That's how that kind of white supremacy uh, mindset was during the Trump administration. Like you didn't see them until 
that uh, February 2nd came up, quote unquote, in the Trump administration. They started prophesying all this fake stuff. Donald Trump will win again, and Donald Trump this, and Donald Trump that. Oh, yeah, and, but see, yeah, yeah. when and his administration. And all that, the angels coming and all yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> Seiko, Aqua, Disco, Beto, Bio, Aqua, do. I was oh, like, no. And she don't man. stop trying to quote uh, George Clinton in the Parliament Funkadelic. I say, look here. <laughs> and then now <laughs> that the Trump administration is gone. They're just like the groundhog after groundhog. They put them right back and they go on hiding somewhere. But yet all of that damage is still there for us to deal with. And so, you know, it it, it, it just, as my dad would say, it grinds my gears. <laughs> like, it, it, it bothers me, man. It's, it's so many different ways where I look at how African-American women are treated in America. And, 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 and why this show is important, because not only do I have a wife, but now I have a daughter now. Who has to grow up in this world? And that, and that like, I think that makes people think a lot when you have daughters, when you especially black daughters, and you think about the things that she'll have to face and go through. But Deontay, before you go, we gotta stop there. When you we gotta stop now at the black church. We gotta Oh, let's stay there for let, 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 let's let, let's put a quarter in a media okay. park right there. Let's go. Where you wanna go with that one? Okay, because you had said something else that I was going to address, but I, I it kind of it kind of the the ship sailed, but I think it'll come back. My bad. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, you know, we're gonna talk about it. I don't, I don't, I'm a type of person, I don't have no shame. You know, I, I try to be as respectful as I can, but but since we on it, and since a lot of people don't talk about it, I'm gonna talk about my experience. I'll just try to be brief. Come on. Um, so I knew that I had the calling for proclamation since I was about 19, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And it has been affirmed and confirmed for me in the spirit of God and also through other people. But I'm a t and, it and let me let me preface this. It has not been all men. I there have been some men of God who have received me who have loved on me, who have prayed for me, who have been mentors to me. And I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. But there have also been men uh -huh. who, who dare I say have oppressed me uh -huh. <laughs> when it comes to my gift of proclamation um, and, 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 you know, kind of questioning, questioning uh, this calling questioning um, my gifts within the fivefold ministry, questioning, um, you know, like I said, my call. And so the, I've had some, man, some some really crazy eye-opening situations. And there was a pastor, uh, African-American man, uh, and, and, you know, I kind of was under his tutelage for a hot minute. And I, you know, I had let every church I went to, I let the pastor know that I have a calling for proclamation because, you know, I wanted to be in decency and in order uh, and, and, and respect, quote unquote, authority. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was kind of strung along and the carrot was dangled in my face. And, you know, I was going through a quote unquote process only to soon discover that I really was I was really being I was picked out to serve a different purpose in the church that I didn't, I didn't request. I didn't ask for, I didn't, I didn't even bring it up. And I was basically offered um, while I was still in uh, divinity school or a, mm -hmm. you know, still a seminary and I was preparing to graduate and I was offered a position as an office clerk okay. in the church. And I, and I said, oh, you know, well, thank you. Let me think about it. I already knew my answer was no. <laughs> because that's not that's not what I was that's not why I was that's not why I was called that's not that was just not my assignment I knew that mm -hmm. um and so and then I started asking questions and I said well what because I wanted to see what was going to happen I said well, well what's the salary for this position mm -hmm. oh I'm sorry we can't tell you that what what? Wait a minute! You trying to offer me a job, and, and you're you don't not want to tell me what the salary is? Salary? I as many jobs as that, and you know, I'm a hustler. I've had many a job, and not nowhere has no one ever offered me a job and never told and did not tell me the benefits. So I said, hmm, okay, um, and I said no. And after that, 
I must have been blackballed. And then I started, I had the audacity. I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to start applying for youth minister positions. Okay. Um, and that that created another situation. And then one time, this was the first time I, I let a pastor know, a black African-American man know that I had a calling for proclamation. And he kind of led me on for about a year. Oh, and he turned me over to a deaconess. And then, you know, he started talking about initial sermon. And that's not the first that was the first time I'd heard it. And also in the second situation, I'd heard it, too. But it was just kind of like that dangling carrot, uh, which, it, you know, they didn't really intend to do it <laughs> or, or they were going to do it if I acquiesced to what to to mold into what they wanted me to be for them, for their ministry. Right. And now, granted, you know, we are to serve. You know, I never mind serving, but I know what God has spoken to me. There's no question in my mind because I have a solid relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I, I sit in silence and I listen and I read the word and I listen to wise counsel. So there's no question in my mind. I know who I am in Jesus Christ. Amen. You better talk. Right? So anyway, he said, OK, before we set your initial sermon, you have to go before the board. Okay. This was a made up board, by the way. This wasn't a real board. Oh, it, it, was, oh, it was just a board for you, right? Okay. It was a board for me. Okay. And right. when I tell you, they, when I say shots fired, they was asking me like random questions. And shots one of them was like, reload. one of them was like, well, how are you going to sustain yourself in ministry? And I'm saying to myself, time out. You're a woman of God and you know that the Lord provides. And you're asking me how God is going to provide for me in ministry. Mm. Listen. I got up from that table. I said, you know what? No, thank you. I'm finished here. I don't have no shame. And people look, I know a lot of people don't like me and that's fine and good because I don't need I don't need my grandma always told me if you got one good friend, you're doing well. And my number one friend is my Lord and Savior. And my second good friend is my grandmother. And I got a couple good girlfriends and that I call from time to time and we're cool. And I have my 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 uh, my mentors. I'm good. I'm good. And so, you know, now I, I won't put too much out there, but um, I'm now under the tutelage of um, a, a woman uh, pastor. And and she has taken me under her wing and she's really okay. given me the mentorship. OK that I had been praying for, that I had been eager for, hungry for and looking for. Um, and I will, you know, I'm just grateful for, for the journey, but it has not been easy. If I were a man, and, and I'm gonna tell you too, the last thing I'll say in the church, we gotta stop putting single women who are in the ministry down because they're not yet married. We cannot control when God is going to send our husband. And I know for a fact God has sent my husband, but I'm still in waiting season, amen. And that doesn't mean that I cannot be effective in ministry. I don't want you and your dusty tail. I don't want you. <laughs> you better so that's let them have it. You better <laughs> let them have it, Reverend. <laughs> she I don't, she want, don't, want, you. You I don't want your husband. I don't want you. I'm fine. I'm secure in who I am. Okay. God has dealt with me. Okay. I don't need, I, you know, we got to stop doing that to, to single women in ministry right. and stop me thinking that every woman's supposed to be in the children's ministry. But, so, you look, know, yeah, we love the children. Yeah. But come on, all of us ain't supposed Don't just keep doing that to all of us. That ain't right. Right. Somebody say that ain't right, Pastor. That ain't right. <laughs> so, 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 and so, here, so here's the other kicker. So, two things that, that I heard when, when you. Oh, heard. wait, hold on. I got to say one more thing, Deontay. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And, let, and let us preach. Aside from Women's Day, Women's Day, Women's season, and when you on vacation in August, Amen. Somebody. Mm -hmm. So, so, so here, so here's a, okay. So here's a, a third thing I want to say. Right. Uh, first of all, as I as I listen to you talk, big ups to my pastor, Pastor Lamont W. Robinson, aka Daddy Pastor, aka my father in law. Right. <laughs> so, I'm the youngest person on his ministerial staff. I've mm -hmm. been. He's pastoring. The church that I grew up in, and so the the entire time that I've been back in my home church, um, we've had one female on the roster, and I and she she's gone on to be with the Lord now. She passed away recently, oh. and um, yeah, 
uh, evangelist Diane Neal. And um, my pastor is not like a lot of other pastors. So he gives us plenty of opportunities to preach throughout the year. Like I can probably count on two hands because because now it's only three of us um, prior to her passing away and prior to her going on to, you know, another church or what have you. And so mm -hmm. we were all in rotation, including her. And so she got opportunities to, to preach and to do different things and not just on, you know, when he was out of town or what have you, you know, and, and so women have an opportunity. And one of the things that, because uh, see, sometimes male pastors, I've realized, don't give women opportunities. And one thing that I found interesting was a couple years ago, prior to COVID, I was invited two, maybe three years in a row, I think to do the seven last words at Paramount Baptist Church in Southeast mm -hmm. DC. Both years, uh, both, each year that I went, I was the only male that had one of the seven last words, all females. And that's unusual, that's, that's all, cool. It was that's all cool. females, I was the only male and they invited me back every year up until when they got a new pastor. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know what it was that maybe I had the lucky number, I don't know, but <laughs> you know, but, I was the only male. And so for me personally, some men would look at that and get irritated. I enjoyed every bit of it because it showed me that while we have a long way to go, um, there were some branches of Zion that were embracing women and what they had to offer and what they brought to ministry. And I talk about that from time to time because, yes, that is valuable. Like I, I love to hear powerful uh, women preach that not only have a story, a life story, but they can exegete a scripture. I mean, they can take a scripture and make you look and make you see something that you never thought was even that there. Before. You yeah, know, because we're looking at it from a different lens. Right. And, and not only that, but um, when you were talking, you allowed me to see some of the things, some of the things that some of us men in ministry are not even aware of in terms of what y'all go through. And then another thing that I wanted to say is uh, to, to all the other men who might be listening or whatever, please like, tag, share, subscribe this and share it with a bunch of other of my male colleagues in the gospel. Stop trying to holler at every woman you see that's a preacher, okay? Because number one, she don't want you all the time, okay? And number two, please, if you ain't going to add nothing to her life, leave her alone. OK, mm -hmm. it's hard enough being a woman in ministry. And then if woman God forbid that she finds herself attached to somebody that ain't about nothing, that that only want one thing that's not trying to push her into a place of purpose, leave her alone because it's hard enough for her to make it, you know, just being a woman and not even just being a woman, but being an African-American woman. Because watch this. You got to kind of sometimes differentiate the two because you're not just a woman. Right. But you're also an African-American woman in America. Mm -hmm. Right. And I say that because I think about people like Susan B. Anthony, right, who was telling Frederick Douglass, you know, well, while you're trying to get the black rights, you need to help uh, the white women to get, to get the chance to vote. You know, and so the thing is, Frederick Douglass is like, I ain't got nothing to do with, with the fight between you and your man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm fighting for my people, you know, I'm fighting for the African-American women. And so, yeah, white women in many different ways can get. Uh, ahead in some ways than a lot of African American women can. I mean, hey, look at what's that lady up in Congress, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, what's her name? You know that 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 can get up in there and and say all kind of reckless stuff and still plead as a woman and still plead white grievance. You know what I'm saying? And still get the support and the backing of of, of, of white men up there in Congress. But yet, you know, here we have African American women who are fighting in every industry, whether it be ministry or uh, TV, whatever industry. And then here's the thing, though. We have some African-American women, uh, men who don't support them and back them up and fight for them. Like, I like I wish, like, for perfect example, I, I wish there was a brother around when Sandra Bland, you know what I'm saying, was being disrespected like that. Because that, because yeah. that, it, it's, it's, I, I, Oh, Lord. It's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 they, they have a movement now I'm sure you've seen called protect black women I've um, heard of and, and I have a problem with I mean you you can just you can just see the inequalities in so many ways you know I mean what is this 2021 yeah. and here this is the first time ever in America's history that we have a black woman you know um, also of Asiatic descent Oh uh, right, right. Who who is the vice the second in charge in the United States? And honestly, 
if she didn't have the support, and I love Biden, by the way, I don't care what y'all can talk about his politics. We ain't going to get into all of that. All I know is, one, he was humble enough to stand behind and alongside a black man who was the president the first time in history. He was humble enough and he was confident enough in his manhood to stand alongside that handsome black man and support him and do what he does in Congress at best to get the Obamacare and all of the things that Trump, uh, President Trump got in there and tried, just unwinded and twisted up and tied up and tossed out. And then on top of that, if it were not for his support and his endorsement, and it has a lot to do with women advancing, we need allies. Just like we talk about LGBTQIA, I'm gonna go there. Just like we talk about the LGBTQIA community having allies, black women need allies and we need our black men to support us and uplift us just like we we do with you. Cause you know, for the most part, now there are always exceptions, but we, for the most part, black women have always been, you know, supported. And this, there's a saying that behind every black man is a strong black woman that is holding him up. We support you all. You know, we, we you know, you bring the we shoot. They used to say, if you bring the bacon home, I'm gonna cook it. We bring in bacon. We cooking it. We frying it. We, you know, making pies. You know I mean? <laughs> and having babies and still supporting you all. We going through post-traumatic stress. Uh, uh, post, uh, post stuff. Yeah. We, we, I mean, the black woman is the out man. We are Listen. the most greatest gift, uh, on this earth, but yet we are, we are so underappreciated and undervalued. And, and like you said, in every industry, and how come I'm gonna say, how come or why come? We don't have Bring any a in black here. woman Supreme Court justice. Hello, somebody. I'm telling you, but but the good thing is we're making progress. And my prayer, and I'm gonna say this to each and every, particularly my my Caucasian brothers and sisters, because you know I love you, and some of us have had these one-off conversations. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let let us not just let this what we're doing now be a trend. And when I say trend, meaning here for a moment and then it passes on once we're on another wave. Yeah. Um, when it comes to, especially in the philanthropic sector, when we're talking private foundations, we're talking family foundations, we're talking corporations, we're talking angel investors and venture capitalists, I'm calling them all out. Um, you know, there are there's a lot of research that is starting and reports that are being published that talk about how black people, particularly women, only get about one percent. And that's probably generous. One percent of, of investment funds and philanthropic dollars into their businesses. Black women are the fastest growing and perhaps even the largest now, but the fastest growing uh, group uh, uh, that is producing entrepreneurs. We have so many black women who are founders and executive directors, um, and I'm happy to see that corporations are starting to uh, hire and promote black women within their company to become, um, you know, like executive director and CEO. But that's just the beginning. And we are not your poster child. Mm -hmm. I have been a poster child in so many different ways, and, and it's fine because okay. I, I take it. In, because I know how important representation is, mm -hmm. um, but we we really got to really what it boils down to is people need to have these conversations in their homes. Right. Everything starts from home, how you're raised, the conversations you have at the table, the conversations you have in the car with with fathers and sons, mm -hmm. with husband and wives with with uncles and aunts with grandparents you know for those of us my white brothers and sisters who have very racist family members um you need you know talk to them don't don't just be like oh that's uncle rusty you know uh, we love him we know we crazy uncle rusty got some racist problems some racism problems <laughs> like, somebody no, said say real. that for anyway, real. oh, anyway. that's that's my sister Natasha Devonish up there in Baltimore. Hey, Natasha, shout out to her. Shout out, she's she's another woman of woman of God in the ministry 
who was recently, uh, I believe, uh, licensed to preach the gospel Yay! up in Baltimore. So shout out to her. Congratulations yes. to her. Yeah. And black women, let me say this too. And we, because we have a tendency, and I get it, because of years and years of oppression and of a racial caste system yes. and of being oppressed. But I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna say this out of love, but let's be real. Now, some of us do support each other, so I'm gonna preface that. But we have got to stop with the crabs in a barrel mentality. If one black woman is shining, that doesn't take away from your shine. Mm -hmm. You can, you can, you can, you see, we gotta do the work to get the results. And all, and I'm gonna tell you something else. All of these folks that you see on social media and they live in the life and they traveling and they over here, they over here every other day. They're in the media. Um, they got Birkin bags and they on the Grammys and shaking and all this kind of stuff. All these people you see, don't be fooled. You know, social media is a highlight reel and people, a lot of people nowadays are caught up in perception and they show you what they want to show you. They don't right. tell you about the struggles and the challenges. And we got to stop. We need to talk to each other about home ownership. And I published yes. my story. I will tell any black woman, anybody, but particularly black women who want to know. And people can testify that I've, I've talked to people. I've called people. I've been convincing people like, no, you need to start now. You need to pay off your debt now. You need to start looking now. You have to, because I really believe that there, and this is, this might be a, uh, uh, how do you say conspiracy theory? Yeah. I really do believe that there is, <laughs> Natasha said, tired of crabs. <laughs> That's my Amen. Sister, Amen. <laughs> yeah, because no, it's real. Like I've reached out to other black women sometimes. It's not all. I've reached out, you know, and say, hey, I've seen, you know, your success. I'm so proud of you. I just want to touch base. You know, I want to I want to learn from you. You know, how did you how did you get funding from this foundation? How did you get this fellowship? And some will, but some won't. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to be able to advance if we don't support each other. Who will? Right. If we don't love on each other, who will? So if black men and white people see us bickering and working against each other and trying to play uncle tom in the workplace and trying to suck up and beat up and and do up one up one another then what makes you think we're going to advance collectively uh so so to that point that you just said and then i got one more thing i want to ask you about before before you know we we we, we go off the air so one thing about that the crabs in a barrel um i saw a video I've seen it several times, but uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan said something because he was at the State of the Black Union with Tabby. Uh oh, Smiley, you don't say it, Farrakhan. Uh, <laughs> uh, back in the day, right? And so, no, and I'm saying this to the point to, to what you were saying, you know, like uh, trying to be, trying to be Uncle Tom and stuff like that. One of the things he said some several years ago was um, the African American community we need to make a pact with us to the point to where we tell we we make it known. To each other that we'll never sell each other out right whatever issues we have we go behind closed doors hash out our issues if i don't like you i'm gonna tell y'all like you but i'm not gonna do it in front of white supremacy we're gonna do this behind closed doors but then on top of that we're gonna come up with an agenda right after we hash out our differences amongst each other in private right because sometimes family don't like family and family got issues with family and sometimes you know we need to, to go in the house and take care of that stuff so that way when we come out in the streets where we can we can uh prove to the world prove to white supremacy that we are a united front right that you can't you don't know our business you don't know the differences that we have to where you can try to use that against us and make that the distraction right to, to to throw us off right because half the time we can't even really come up with an agenda as a people because we're too busy fussing uh with each other in the street everybody trying to be in charge everybody trying to be the leader mm, everybody want to be seen everybody want to be out front and all this kind of, and that's cool and fine okay we see you we love you yeah. <laughs> but you know listen it, it's going to take a collective because when you dead and gone if you haven't established your legacy and uplifted other people you sure Yes. Look, okay, so here's another thing because we're talking about the mistreatment of America, but white supremacy is not just stuck in America. Oh, yeah, right. it's global. Global. Right. White, white global. supremacy is global. Global. I, I'm going to say this name and I want you to tell me what you think. We're going to kind of end it off on this one. Meghan Markle. 
Oh, man. Okay, but look, now let, let me preface this. I have not seen the full interview. So I, you know, I, I saw some commentary back and forth, yeah. but I, you know, okay. So what's her name? Um, I, I'm blanking on her name, Beyonce. What's the young lady? Amanda Seals. Amanda Seals. Oh, oh Lord, yes. yes. Oh I'm a, man! Yeah, yeah. That's I'm gonna start with that. So now, because I, I saw I saw her commentary. Yeah, Sister, my wife like, hit me to her. Sister, don't be playing no games. Let me tell you about. She so, don't play no games. So Amanda Seals, and I love her because she 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 has time for everybody <laughs> on her social platforms, she and did. I love it. She just she speaks the truth. She speaks her mind, and she don't have to be in makeup. I love it. I was getting ready to say. It. Bad head day and all, sis be there. She is stinky the breath, you know, got the cats on the couch and every dust everywhere. <laughs> but she is her authentic self and she will tell it like it is. And so when she she, you know, get, gave this commentary about Meghan Markle, and so apparently when Meghan Markle was 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 conversing with Oprah yeah. and Oprah asked her, like, well, didn't you know the history of this royal family? Like you didn't know who you were marrying, right? And then she was kind of like, "Well, you know, we'll know." And I didn't as think so, I needed to. <laughs> I didn't think I needed to. And Amanda was like, "Are you kidding me?" Like as a, she was like, as a black woman, you know, you you were entering into the one of the most and goodness forgive me for saying this like one of the most racist you know very eurocentric mm -hmm. um supremacist uh family lines uh in the world and you didn't know what you didn't even google this man you know and she was like google is your friend and she was like we google regular you know what we we google a regular dude from all around the way so why just not right and so so but her point her point was is that as black women we and, and i'll take it back a little bit uh uh we we have to have and we have a double consciousness i dare i say triple consciousness mm -hmm. because we have to be conscious about how we show up we gotta know where we're going like you know if i'm going into a corporate office i gotta do my research if i'm dating somebody i've got to do my research we have right. to be equipped and conscious and know what we're about to be up against i, I mean we some of it we already know but but it's it's important like in the as she said in the era of internet uh, to everything is so readily accessible. You need you need to know something. You need to yeah. prepare yourself just like you would with a job interview. It's the same thing with dating. It's the same thing with marriage. You need to know what you're getting into. You know what yeah. I mean. So anyway, I will say this. I'm not. I I, I I'm not. And I'm, I hate. We have to say this all the time. And Georgetown too. I don't know if you saw Georgetown Law. There was a professor, a law professor, that came out. And I, I want to say this. And I think are we over time? Yeah, we a little bit over time, but go ahead and say this real quick. Go ahead. Say okay, it. but anyway, she um she was talking to one of her colleagues. Now y'all gotta be careful with this because we're in a day of digital and recording, and yeah. everything you say is everything you do and you say, and you if you around a camera, you in the cloud. And so she said about oh all of the all of the students in my class that have low marks, they're all they're the blacks, and she was like, come on guys. And my question is, well, first of all, why is it all of the black students in your class that have low marks? It might be the way that you're teaching and disseminating the information. And if you cared so much as a professor who I know probably had tenure, who is paid very well, why don't you take some time and do some focus groups and some research and sit down and talk with them individually and see what they're struggling with and tutor them. That's what office hours are for. Woo, Deontay, I'm gonna tell you, if I could, if I could say what I really think in some of the spaces that I have been in, they would hate, I'd probably be dead. I'd probably be dead. <laughs> I'm telling you, but yeah, Meghan Markle, I'm gonna be, I love how Prince Harry, um, I love how he protects from what I can see, he protects his wife. And, and then he, put, he, he mm -hmm. gave up royalty. 
Like absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And that that says a lot about him as a person. And of as course we know the yeah. Yep. And of course we know the tragedy with his mother. So here's the um, thing. What Amanda Seals also said that I think a lot of people missed if you watched what she said. She said, How could you not expect them to do to you, you know, something like this to you when they are the same people who are suspected heavily of killing his mother? A white hello, woman. somebody. Hello, hello, hello. So if the white hello woman was not off limits, hello, you woman of color. Yes, biracial, whatever you want to call yourself with a white daddy, but a black mama. Yes, you ain't off limits because you got all kinds of melanin in your blood. You can be light brown, uh, whatever, about, about as you light. You know what? I th and I think it was a reality check for our sister. Mm -hmm. I think it was a reality check because she does look like she could pass as a white woman. She could. But, my, but I was talking to someone and they said, you know what it probably was when they saw her mother. When yep. she, when her mother, and her mother's a beautiful woman. When beautiful her mother showed up to that whole wedding, you know that's a black, that's a sister, sister. She, I, she probably, she look, she probably told Megan and look, Megan. She said, "This is nice." You know she warned her. You know she, she probably, did. I, I know she did. A, a real black woman like that gonna warn you. I, she said, "Look, that look." Because Mama did her research. Uh, Mama probably didn't even have to. Mama probably already knew. Mama probably, what they they from South Central, right? I don't. I, I'm I no. I think they from Cal. I think they from South Central, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Oh yeah. They from yeah. California. Love. They from over there. They from over there. They from over there. Yeah. yeah. But no. Nah, but no. But but but. So if we can go down rabbit holes, uh, yes, about the mistreatment of African American. Oh, women. you and me can talk. Listen, we could make this a series. <laughs> Yeah, we can. You know what? We can listen. This is my show. I can do what I want to do. Okay, I can go on. I ain't got to answer nobody. Ain't no NBC network behind me. Okay, so that's the power of black enterprise and ownership. Yes, that's why a yes. lot of times when people come on my show, sometimes they be panicking like, "Oh, I'm late." Listen, this is my show. Okay, I'm in my basement for crying out loud. All right, so I do what I want to do. I bring you on when I want to. I can Tyler be on how long. Own, own your own stuff. On my own, listen. Own stuff. Listen, and I and I make it what I want to make it. Okay, and so this is the thing. So if we want to do a round two, we can do a round two. It don't matter to me. Uh, but of course, so if you want to do a round two, that's fine. I got I got a guest next week. I got some, uh, but I think the week after that, I'm open up. But we can talk about that once we end the show off. We'll um, figure it out. I I'm, I was half joking. I was yeah. half joking, but. Um, Deontay, it's been a pleasure, and I Absolutely. thank you. I thank you for this opportunity, and and I I, I feel like a weight has been lifted because um, I've been carrying a lot of this a long time, and it feels good to tell my truth mm. and to be real and to, to 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 let if anybody is listening, you know, you may feel some type of way. God bless you. I love you, but God loves you more. Uh, but but that? these are things that need to be said and need to be talked about. And I should, you know, we shouldn't always have to preach to the choir. You know, I think we got to also pull in other people in these conversations as as well. Um, but thank you, thank you for the opportunity, Deontay. Yes, me, Erickson, y'all. Oh, I got an applause. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> yeah, you got. You did go. <laughs> Listen, so, a, so pe see, a lot of times people ask me. Uh, when they come on my show, like they, they wonder because I know it, it goes on Facebook Live, but I do a whole little thing on my own where I do my own graphics, my own everything. Um, but Yasmin, listen, it was a pleasure having you here. Like I said, this ain't gonna be the last time you on here because we homies in, in real life. This this ain't no for camera stuff. We homies in real life. Yeah, so it's my like your biscuit. Huh? <laughs> I say you my home skillet biscuit. Yeah, it's so, a so look. It's gonna be plenty of other stuff. That I had, and listen, I I'm a firm believer that anybody that has been a blessing to me along the way, that's like folk like you, like even I even had Rudy on here, Rudy Lee Daniel from Howard. Yeah, you know, he came I remember, on. I remember Rudy. Hey, Rudy. Yeah, he. I mean, he came on here and did an awesome job, man. Mature and just like I'm like, yo, is this Rudy, man? This the this the brother? <laughs> this the Q? Like, yo, this is my brother right here. <laughs> and so you know, I had uh, Jonathan Wade on here, you know. And oh, so that's any, that's that's. Jonathan, 
and he's a good he's a good guy, man. Yeah, he's he out there passing in Baltimore now, man. I'm proud of him. So it's like <laughs> anybody that that I have come up come up you know cross paths with, listen, and and I know they're good people and got something to say. You always got a spot here. And uh, turn up the volume podcast. So before we go, I want you to I want you to tell the people where they can follow you. And as you said, I'm gonna put the thought the lower thirds up here so they know where to follow you at. I appreciate you. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure and an honor to be with you all this evening. You, my name is Yasmin Arrington, aka Yazzie Speaks. You can follow me on um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, TikTok. Uh, it's uh, Instagram is at Yazzie Speaks 2.0. Uh, Twitter is Yazzie Speaks. Uh, Facebook is Yasmin Arrington. LinkedIn is Yasmin Arrington MDiv. Um, and, you know, for my youngins, you can find me on TikTok. How about that? But it, it, it's, it's clean. It's, it's good. It's good stuff. <laughs> Yasmin Arrington, give it up for her one more time, y'all. Give it up for her. Listen, uh, Yasmin, I'm going to close the show out. So hang up, hang to the side about for about a good five minutes. Let me close the show out. Then I talk to you offline. Uh, but once again, I want to thank Yasmin for coming on and, and chatting it with me today and talking about a subject that is just so interesting and not just interesting, but it's a conversation that we need to have. It's a conversation that we need to have behind closed doors, because even though white supremacy can come across this show, this is this is behind closed doors for me, in my opinion, to where we can talk about this stuff with our people because our people are listening. And so uh, I want to thank her. Again, for coming on the show and, and gracing us with her presence, bringing all of that knowledge, bringing those experiences, bringing that wisdom. And I want to, uh, I want to thank her and, and, and be praying for her as she continues to go about the ministry and life. Y'all watch her, uh, listen to her show, Millennial Minds. Uh, I know we got some episodes that we done did in the past. That's some funny episodes. We're going to find we're going to find a way to get them links on this uh, social media <laughs> on Facebook. So y'all can listen to because there was some funny episodes that her and I did on her show. Um, but nonetheless, we thank her very much. Y'all listen, do me a favor. Y'all can uh, follow me on different platforms at Deontay Carroll, Deontay J. Carroll Senior at Facebook. There it is right there. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Deontay Carroll, all one word, no apostrophe. Also, this is very important, okay, because even though I do my, my, my show via Facebook Live, I also post every episode on my YouTube page right there at Deontay Carroll, no apostrophe. There's a space in between Deontay and Carroll. Okay, go and subscribe to the channel because you can see all of the episodes I've ever done of Turn Up the Volume podcast right there on my YouTube page, okay? Okay. And so uh, we'll be we here every week, 6.30 p.m. Fridays. Heck, I can switch it up any day I want to for real, but we here once a week. My show is a one-stop shop where you can get theological issues, political issues, social issues, issues that affect the African-American community, issues that, that, that might not directly affect us, but they might indirectly affect us. Y'all, listen, I want to be able to empower my people and to give my people something worth listening to because guess what? Everybody got a podcast. Everybody got a microphone, but watch this. I want to give y'all something of substance and if that means i gotta bring people here every week from different fields of expertise to give y'all the truth about what's happening then it is what it is i could be here all week on a friday or night on a friday night but once again y'all listen listen like tag share and subscribe and share this video do me a favor even though the video is about to go off Tag five women in this video or five men in this video and let's get this 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 information out there. Let's get this message out here about the wonderful things that we're doing here. Turn up the volume. And so until then, until next week, y'all, I got a guest coming next week. Listen, I got a, a bunch of um, guests that, I'm, that I have lined up coming in the next few weeks. So next week I have my very own uncle, uh, Pastor Charles R. Yerby. Uh, I know him personally because this is my my uncle, yo. He my uncle. He's Uncle Richie to me, but he's passed the Yerby to a lot of other people. And so next week we're going to be having Pastor Yerby uh, out of Baltimore, Maryland. He pastors the City of Abraham Church of Ministries in Baltimore, Maryland, and we're talking about passing the baton, preparing the next generation. And we're going to be talking about. Um, his story, his experience, what it means to train up the next generation and what it means 
to uh, prepare them because a lot of times I think there's a disconnect between the older generation and the younger generation. So, y'all, next week you don't want to miss this. We're going to have a good time. And as we always do here, turn up the volume. So, like I said, I'm your host, Deontay Carroll. And until next time, until next week, y'all do me a favor. Keep that volume turned up. Yes, me, stay put. I'm going to holler at you. Y'all, peace out. I love y'all. Be good and be blessed.